everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title, it's all about lens flares. In fact, my five favorite ways to create lens flares, and I'm gonna pop some of them up so they're passing on screen right here and right now. And I just wanna let you guys know, if you enjoy the video, please remember to hit the little like button down there in the corner, it helps so much. And also, go ahead and hit the red subscribe button so you subscribe to my channel. It'll be a different color probably if you're already subscribed to the channel. And also, maybe the best way to support the channel is to pick up my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. The link appeared up there in the top corner of the video. Oh, and you know what? Before we jump into it, the very first flare that we're going to be create uh, we're going to be creating today is based on light leaks. And down in the description of this video, I have a free download I've created. 10, count them, 10 free light leaks that you can download, you can use them for whatever you want. I don't care if you're using them in the next top Hollywood project, um, although I'm not, if you are if you have a job of that stature, I'm not quite sure what you're doing watching my tutorials here, but um, you know, you can use them for whatever you want, that's the point. Your book cover, your next billboard advertisement, or just your website and Facebook profile, I don't care, use them for whatever you like. It's a free download, link in the description. Let's check out this tutorial. All right, so the first effect, it's going to be all about the light leak. Uh, like I said, I have this pack of light leaks. There's 10 of them, Tutvid Flare, all these different light leaks. Uh, they probably should be renamed Tutvid Leak. Uh, but all you need to do is grab one of them. They're huge files, like size-wise, uh, or dimension-wise, I should say, and drag it into or onto your photo. I'm going to take number nine here and drop it on my photo in Photoshop. And it's going to wait a second, and it's going to place it. And I'm going to zoom out here once it places it. You can see it's, it's preparing a smart object. And when it places it, you can just go ahead and hit the check icon. It's going to place it as a smart object. We're going to see that over here in the layers panel when, when it decides to actually finish placing it here. There we go. Over here in the layers panel, that little icon just denotes, hey, this is a smart object. Let's zoom out here. Uh, you could edit free transform and make this larger or smaller or anything you like. But the key to really working with these lens flares is simply set it to a blend mode of linear dodge add. You can actually do any of these. You can go screen, color dodge, or linear dodge add. Linear dodge add is just interesting, especially with lens flare light leak type stuff because you have this amazing control with flares and the fill opacity adjustment. It really helps to interact like real light. But you can see here if I set it to the screen blend mode, it is a little smoother. And of course, you can still use fill and opacity and things like that. And uh, because it just fades to black, you can see there's no hard edge. So I can really take this light leak and just set it right up here. So it's just kind of matching the red light that's already hitting his hair before the light leak, after the light leak. One of the other cool things you can do here, I'm gonna drag the light leak back fully into the image. And that's really how you should use it, by the way. You absolutely don't need to use the entire thing. Use exactly the bits that are going to enhance your image. Uh, don't allow it to wreck your image. I'm gonna drag it back in so we can really see what's about to happen here. If you have an image, let's say that you need a lot of blue light in instead of the yellow and orange, well, all you need to do is throw a hue saturation adjustment layer above this smart object. Use the hotkey Command Option G, that'd be Control Alt G on the PC. It's gonna clip that adjustment layer just to your flare and just slide the hue. So there we go, we got some pink, we got some other colors. You can really do all you want with it. And there's like a blue to a teal. Uh, you can really mess around and we get more of a, a pinkish bluish uh, flare there and just reduce the opacity a little bit more and Voila, we have a nice blue flare coming out of that top corner instead of a red flare. So the first lens flare is actually a bunch of light leaks. And that is a free download that you can uh, get. Again, link down in the description. All right, number two. This is a... Um, this is a lens flare that's really cool and it's really non-destructive and so easy to do. A photo from the campus of Penn State University. What we want to do is open up the camera raw filter. Now this is a camera raw image, so all I have to do is double click on the layer thumbnail. You can work with this even on a JPEG or any image, a PSD, by coming up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, all right? So that may be the best way to get into it. I'm gonna just double click here on my thumbnail. It's gonna bring me into the Camera Raw Editor as you see. Now, the way this works is come up here and just grab the Adjustment Brush. It's this brush right here, Adjustment Brush. And with the Adjustment Brush, I'm gonna select this little flyout menu and choose Reset Local Correction Settings. The first thing you want to do is increase contrast. I mean, obviously, it's a light leak, so we want a nice burst of light where that's coming from. And the extent to which you increase exposure, you're going to get either a more subtle or more harsh, burned out, you know, really damaging light leak, which may be what you want. I like to reduce contrast to negative 100 and also the new dehaze slider. Take it down about halfway. 
Beyond that, we can add color with temperature and tint and even the color section, uh, but check it out. We can just like paint in uh, a, a little light leak right up there in the sky if we like. And by the way, feathering is at 100%, flows at about 26. Uh, you can, again, if you go up with the flow, you're just gonna get a more intense light leak, uh, but I like to have a little bit more control. So I like to keep it you know, around 30, I don't know, 25, 30, 35, something like that, who's counting? I'm gonna undo here a couple clicks to just take me back. Um, so I've got a flow of about 30, and important here, we don't want auto mask turned on. You want that to be off, 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 off. All right, let's um, let's make our brush a little bit bigger using the square bracket keys, and I'm gonna paint a light leak up here into the top corner. All right, and it looks kind of eh, right? Well, let's increase the warmness of it to really try to sell the fact that hey, this is like the sun coming through, uh, and I'm going to go to color even, and I'm gonna choose like a nice warm yellow orange, something like that. All right, and it's still probably a little bit too much, uh, so we can just tone this back here. Uh, let's tone the exposure back a little bit and maybe pull off on the reds a little bit, pull off on the, the warmness. And even on the color here, we can just reduce the saturation a little bit, hit okay. And we have a nice light leak slash lens flare effect up there in the corner. And the cool thing about this, of course, you could place multiples within one image. Uh, there's not many times you'll really wanna do that, but you do have the option and it's so easy and non-destructive and you can go in and adjust that light leak right here in the adjustment brush as easily as I just did. Go ahead and hit OK. It's going to commit the change in Photoshop, and you're going to be good to go. Now, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you would like to support the channel, what I do here, tutvid.com, the best way to do it right now, at least, is to pick up a copy of my course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. The link is right up there. If you pick up a copy, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. If not, no worries. I still love you, and this tutorial is still free. In fact, there's tons of free tutorials on the channel. Check them out. Subscribe. All right, let's get back to the video here. Um, I'm going to show you probably my favorite way to create a lens flare and I use this particularly when I'm working with composites and images where I'm kind of really jumping in and playing around with the light and I want to change the lighting a little bit. I've got this composite image here and we want to really increase the light coming you know, up the street, if you will. This whole background has been created. Um, this is just some hotel in Atlantic City, or motel, I should say. I don't know if it's quite classy enough to call it a hotel. It's more of a motel. Um, so we want to create some light coming up the street. So I'm going to come into the composite BG folder, and I think just right above all these uh, adjustment layers here, I want to create a new layer, and I'm going to name this layer Flare. In fact, I'm just going to pull my layers panel out. I'm going to name this layer Flare, and we're going to grab the brush tool, and I want a pretty big brush, not too thousand pixels big maybe maybe a thousand though and we want it to be oh, not a hundred 1000 there we go yeah 1000 will look good and hardness needs to be zero percent all right and then we'll click out here in the middle of the document now a couple things you're going to notice it's appearing behind him that's because he is up here in the subject folder so let's just shut that off so we can get to our original background and I also want my color to be white. So I'm gonna just click once, maybe click twice. And at this point, I'm gonna duplicate this lens flare by hitting Command or Control J. So this top flare is gonna be flare hyphen center. This is the center of the flare. So we have two copies of the flare, one on the bottom, one on the top. Now I'm gonna select the one on the bottom here and we're gonna go edit, free transform. There we go. I'm gonna hold down Shift and Alt. There'll be Shift and Option on the PC. And I'm gonna scale this layer upward. I'm gonna make it pretty big. Enter or return to commit that change. And now what we want to do is go image adjustments, hue saturation, because we're going to edit the hue and saturation of this underlying, the giant flare that we created. I want to tick on colorize. And the first thing I need to do because it's solid white is reduce the lightness and boost the saturation. So you can see we're, we're getting that red flare back there, right? I might want to make it a little darker. And then I'm going to slide over here. I want this to be pretty orange. By pretty orange, I mean, you know, tangerine orange there we go great and now what I have is my nice big orange flare and this smaller flare in the center this is sort of the hot spot of the flare this flare center I want to set to the blend mode like we did with the light leaks we want to set it to the blend mode of linear dodge add so I'm going to select linear dodge add and then for the flare on the bottom this is the orange flare I'm going to set it to a blend mode of screen Go ahead, screen. You can see it changes it a little bit. And then we just adjust the opacity. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of that flare a little bit, take it down to about 80. And then for the linear dodge, again, like we would have with the leaks, we want to adjust the fill opacity, not the overall opacity. And I'm going to adjust the fill opacity until I just start to see a little bit of the background behind it. All right, now I want to select both of these layers. Select the flare center layer, hold down shift, select the bottom flare layer. I'm going to grab my move tool, and we're going to move this over here until the flare looks about right. See how it's just a big wash of light coming up the street. All right, now I'm going to turn my subject folder back on and see what it looks like. So there it is with the flare. I'm going to hit command comma with both those layers selected. It's going to hide those layers. There it is without the flare. 
with the flare, without the flare. So I just think with the flare, it just adds a little something. It helps conceal those buildings a little bit more. It gives a little bit more mood and drama and depth uh, to this particular composite. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just close this composite uh, because it's a massive file at about 2 gigabytes and you know sucking up a lot of my resources. So I'm just going to go close, and I'm not going to worry about saving it right now. Let's come over to the stadium composite. I want to use that same exact technique and add some stadium lights to this stadium. Now, I just did a tutorial on how to create this composite, uh, but I just want to show you the, the specific lens flare technique right above light bank I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this layer as we just did flare and we're going to use our brush tool but instead of just using a bland circle flare I'm going to right click and I have a bunch of flares here now you can look around there's a great website brusheasy.com google it and it'll come up for sure they have tons of free lighting packs look for some flare brushes and I'm going to take this flare brush right here it's nice and flat I'm going to make it a little bit bigger maybe take it to like 2300 pixels in size and I'm just going to click. I'm going to click once. I'm going to click twice, maybe three times to get a nice a nice flare going right there in the center. And then I'm going to duplicate this as I did before. Command or Control J. I'm going to rename this layer, right? Flare center. I feel like we've done this before, right? Select the other flare. Command or Control T to free transform and scale it up quite a bit larger. Something kind of like so. Go ahead, enter, return to commit that change. Now with the with the rear flare, the hotkey for hue saturation is command or control U. It's going to bring up hue saturation, tick on colorize, right, the colorize option. And we need to darken it and increase saturation. Let me darken it just to kiss more. And we're going to make this nice and orange as well. We want nice yellow-orange lights just flooding out of these light banks. Hit OK. And now this is really imperative that we set this to that blend mode of screen, right? It's starting to blend. And this to the blend mode of linear dodge add and really reduce that fill to something like that and reduce overall opacity of the orange a bit as well. And then you can just select both of these, right? Select top layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer with the move tool. I can take this right up and put it up there where the floodlight is. I can hit Command or Control T. I can rotate it a little bit if need be. Uh, and if I want this to be a little punchier, it looks a little washed out, I go to that flare center and I crank up the fill a little bit. So I'm really getting a nice kick of light out of the middle and just force it to, to be a little bit more than it is. I can push the uh, the overall, the, uh, the opacity of the screen layer up as well. I can select both layers again. Simply hold down Alter Option and drag a copy of this over to the other light bank. And just like that, we've used that same technique of doubling up the flare, but instead of just using a simple circular brush with soft edges, we used a specific flare brush, and we create another type of lens flare coming from these light banks. You can see how it's giving a little bit of flare across his face. They're kind of cool. All right, so last but not least, in fact, I'm going to close this composite image as well because uh, that is a large file too. I'm going to, no, I'm not going to save it. All right, so we've got this nightclub photo, and this is going to be where we create a blue lens flare, but this is, this is cool. This is different from all the other ways we've created lens flare as well. In fact, this way takes advantage of Photoshop's filter render lens flare. It's kind of neat. Check this out. We're going to open up our info panel first and see we've got this X and Y readout, right? X and Y and it's giving us a readout of where we are in the document. Let's say we want to place a lens flare uh, right up here like on this guy's head. What I'll do is I'll take my, uh, well actually I don't really even need to take the uh, the I, the, I, the sampler tool, I'm going to move my info panel out here. I'm just going to hover my mouse over like this guy's head and I can see, okay, 3960 for X and 250 for Y. So I'll probably write those numbers down, 3960 by 250. I'll probably forget it, but let's, let's give it a shot here, 3960 by 250. All right, let's create a new layer and I'm going to name this layer Flare. Now this layer needs to be filled with black. So we're going to go edit, fill, and we're going to fill it with black. We're filling it with black because the lens flare is going to be very bright and white, and we just want to be able to set it to a blend mode of screen, and screen's going to drop away all the black and just leave the white, right? See, all the black went away as soon as I set it to screen. I'm going to go normal. Now, here's where the magic happens. Foreground color is set to white. Background color is black. Everything's default. We're going to go filter, render, lens flare. Now, we can choose the type of lens flare we want, 50 to 300, 35 mil prime. I think I'm going to go... I don't know. I'm, I think I'm going to go... Oof. Yeah, I'll go a little different here. I'm going to go with the 35 millimeter prime. Now, we could just drag it to the top corner and say, yeah, somewhere up there is about right. Maybe increase the brightness a little bit and voila. Or you can hold down your alter option key and click on the lens flare thumbnail and set a precise X and Y coordinate point of, I already forget what it is, 3560 or 3650 by 250, something like that. Let's hit OK and it's going to position it. 
Nope, I think it was actually 36.50, right? 36.50 by 2.50. Hit OK. There we go. Hit OK. It's going to place the lens flare. We set it to a blend mode of, you guessed it, screen. And there we go. Now, I said we were going to create a blue lens flare. It's not quite where I want it to be. And you can see I've got the sharp edge down here. So what do I do? Well, I have to transform the entire layer. Commander Control T and just simply drag that bottom point over, drop it in place, voila. Now, in order to change the color of the lens flare, we're going to do exactly what we did before. Throw a hue saturation adjustment layer above this. Hotkey Command, Option G, Control Alt G on the PC. Let's go colorize. You want to be careful messing with lightness because if you pull the lightness up, it's going to convert all that black to gray, and therefore it's not all going to disappear. So just be careful doing that. Uh, in fact, we really want to darken more than anything so we can get some color up there. And you can see as we saturate it, we're getting all that red up there. We don't want red, though. We want blue. There's some blue. Looks good. Boom. There's before, there's after. So we've added a nice blue lens flare to the top corner uh, using the render lens flare that we have available to us in Photoshop. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this video. Now, if you use any of these lens flares, um, I'd love to see it. If you're on Instagram, uh, follow me at tutvid or you know, really don't have to follow me, but at least tag me in the artwork that you put up. I would love to see it. I'll go and give it a like. I'll, you know, maybe we'll have a little conversation or something. I like to mix it up with the good people on Instagram. Um, yeah. So if you, if you create something, tag me on Instagram. And if you've enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel. That way you never miss another video in the future. I love it. Hopefully you're going to love it. I think you probably will. Uh, and for creating five different lens flares in Adobe Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.